The Russian propaganda war machine, baby. Ugh. Recently, the Russian machine building company Ural Vagonzova has delivered a new batch of upgraded T-90M Korov main battle tanks to Russian army. The T-90M Korov is the most advanced armored vehicle in the family of T-90 main battle tanks. TASS reported that the assembly lines in Nizhny Tagil are operating round the clock to roll out the tanks. The main battle tanks feature a new turret, next generation reactive armor, a new cannon, advanced communications and a more powerful engine. They are outfitted with advanced equipment that helps the tank crew effectively strike targets. Ural Vagonzabad has fulfilled the defense procurement plan on time. The T-90M Prorub was tested by the Russian army during the military exercise ZAP in 2017, which was held from 14 to 20 September 2017. This tank was upgraded thanks to the combat experience of the Russian armed forces gained during the counter-terror operation in Syria. The Russian army could order the first batch of 400 T-90M after the first trial test. The Russian Defense Ministry and Ural Begonzabad have signed a contract for the delivery of T-90M main battle tanks to the Russian Army at the Army 2017 International Military Technical Forum that was held near Moscow in August 2017. Heavily upgraded version of the T-90M Prorov similar to the T-90MS. The T-90M Prorov is the most advanced armored vehicle in the family of T-90 main battle tanks, and most of all fit for modern warfare, thanks to its all-round armor protection, top-notch all-weather, highly automated fire control and enhanced survivability. The main features include the modernization of the old turret design, which is equipped with the new advanced fire control system Kalina, with integrated combat information and control systems. Improve. So I got to thinking, you know, with all the talk of tanks that are going to make a damn bit of difference in the uh, Iraq, I mean the uh, Ukraine war, you know, I thought, uh, you know what, I need to find out about this T-90M tank and let you uh, form your own opinion. Um, now, I did not pull up any information on the M1 Abram, and I have some personal stories about my tank stories. I've had a lot of experience with tanks, just like Colonel McGregor, except I had it from not a command standpoint, but, <laughs> but, but an operational standpoint. And uh, I got some funny stories about that. You can wait to the end of the video if you want to listen to those stories. Uh, that was when I was in the Marine Corps as a combat engineer. Like I said, I've served many hats in the U.S. military. Uh, so let's just get into the T-90 tank, uh, the T-90M. And this is what the Ukrainians are going to be coming up against. It, 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 to me, it sounds like a more impressive tank than the M1 Abram, and the Russians have many, many more of these than we do. Uh, we, and, and I'm going to, let's get into it. Let's just talk about the T90M first. So let's just get into that, and then I'll, I'll get into the rest of the video. So the T90M is an improved version of the T90 tank. Uh, the T90, by the way, they're, they're filled in a lot of those too. So, uh, you know, we're, we're talking thousands of these. Well, not maybe not thousands of the T90M. That's the improved tank. But the T90s are coming out. Uh, and, and so it's, but here, let's just, just read it. Okay, I'll just read it to you. So it was the first public revealed, first publicly revealed in 2017. So it's a fairly recent tank. I don't even remember when the M1 Abrams came out. Maybe you can uh, leave a comment below for... Uh, any the 16 people that watch these videos uh it follows the lines of the t90 ms tank which was designed for export okay yeah anything designed for export they're going to strip off uh so the t90m was trailed uh trailed by the russian army in 2017 during the same year a contract was signed to deliver the first batch of 10 newly built T90M tanks, blah, 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 delivers the first batch. For the okay, the upgraded TM has improved armor protection. It uses, and I have no idea what this word, uses a re, 
leak it, re-leak it, R-E-L-I-K-T, re-leak it, built-in explosive reactive armor. So that's exactly what we have on our uh, M M1 Abrams. So uh, it looks like the Russians uh, and probably the Chinese have copied our reactive explosive armor on our tanks, uh, probably uh, through the Biden administration, because Biden is a com compromised uh, Chinese asset that has sold all our military secrets. But anyway, so let's keep going. In place of the previous contact, K-O-N-T-A-K-T, I wish I could pronounce Russian in some fact, K O N. K-O-N-T-A-K-T-5. It provides protection against tandem warheads and significantly reduces penetration of the APFSDS rounds. So uh, the T-90M is fitted with rubber side skirts with uh, built-in armor plates. Some areas of the tank are covered by a cage. Uh, well, I've seen the cage armor on the M1 Abrams. Uh, I saw those during the Iraq, Iraq War. Uh, and special net. I, yeah, I've seen that too. So basically <laughs> what the Russians have done is copied everything we've done with our tank. Uh, of course, we haven't improved on it because uh, we have a corrupt government. But uh, it includes protection, certain types of anti-tank weapons. This tank is fitted with NBC, NBC protection. So there you go. You can't hit it with, um, uh, well, nuclear, biological, or chemical weapons and automatic uh, fire suppression systems. Interior is lined with a I have no idea. Somebody, if you're a tank person, what's a spall interior? S-P-A-L-L. -L, a spall liner. What's a spall liner? I don't know what that is. Uh, there's also a countermeasure system which triggers smoke grenades, discharges once the tank is illuminated by, illuminated by a laser beam. The system significantly reduces the chance of being hit by enemy anti-tank guided weapons with semi-automatic uh, guidance. Interestingly, the first documented combat loss of a T-90M was reportedly shot down by a Swedish Carl Gustaf 84mm anti-tank recoilless rifle. This is a good indication that the latest Russian main battle tanks are vulnerable to modern anti-tank weapons. So anyway, then it goes on and uh, it talks about, well, secondary, I guess this is significant. You do want to know this. Um, well, it uses an autoloader. That's important. Uh, carousel autoloader with a... Pff, wow. Can you imagine a carousel loader of 22 rounds? That means this tank can sit there and fire 22 rounds downrange without even moving from its position, probably in rapid order. Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, when you think about the, the T-72 tanks that the Ukrainians are using that are manually loaded, have you ever watched how long it takes to load one of them huge rounds into a tank? Uh, this, this is, they could, they could basically fire probably five rounds at one T-72 Ukraine tank before, uh, I'm, I'm just guessing, I, I'm just throwing this shit out there, uh, before they could get off of one more shot. Um, you know, you miss with the first shot, you're dead. Uh, secondary armament consists of coaxial 7.6, well, imagine that, 7.62 millimeter. Do you own an AK-47? I won't say whether I do or don't, but uh, you might want one of those guns someday. And uh, that's a very common ammunition, so that's worldwide. I mean, you can, you can go in pretty much in any country in the world to get 7.62 millimeter, millimeter uh, gun ammunition. Uh, there's also a roof-mounted remotely controlled weapon station armed with a 12.7 millimeter heavy machine gun both machine guns are operated under armor well that's you know that was a big thing with the humvees back in the um, iraq war we didn't have the armor uh, we had to actually uh, put sandbags on top of the vehicles at first because the, uh, the our u.s uh, military commanders were so fucked well, so freaking stupid, they didn't even know that you might want to uh, have some uh, protection for the guy firing the machine gun on top of the vehicle. Um, so, anyway, it goes on. You can read the rest of the specs. I, I, I know it's, a, it's a crew of three. You do need to know that. Um, and then it's, it's a diesel engine, so that's cheap fuel. Um, which, I, I don't know. I wonder how that diesel is going to work in these really cold environments in Ukraine. But uh, we'll see. All right, so let me get to the tank that I wanted to talk about because <laughs> this gets back to my experience. Like I said, I'm not going to talk about the M1 Abrams. I don't even think we're going to see those on the, uh, the field of battle. But what I don't understand is why, and I don't understand what happened to them all, 
but it was the old M60 tank and uh, these are what I trained with in the Marine Corps okay and uh, I just want to let you because uh, we had many of these back at the time I can't believe that they are all decommissioned and been melted down maybe they did maybe they just just threw them in the desert somewhere and you know that but I don't understand why we can't provide M60s to Ukraine uh, that doesn't make any sense to me but I'll just read about this tank because this is what I trained with back in the 80s which is basically what the Ukrainians are using with those old T-72 tanks so the M60 is an American second generation main battle tank it was officially standardized as the tank combat full track 100 and 105 millimeter gun Although developed from the M48 Patton, the M60 tank series was never officially christened as the Patton tank. Uh, the U.S. Army considered it a product improved descendant of the Patton tank. Uh, let's see. I, want to, I just want to get you the... Oh, yeah. So here. The M60 tank series became America's primary main battle tank during the Cold War reaching a production total of 15,000 M60 tanks. Hall production ended in 1983, but 5,400 older models were converted to the M60A3 variant, ending in 1990. So where are all these tanks? Why can't we, if we're, you know, we're going to fight this war, why can't we give the M60s? We got 15,000 of them. Russia's only got 2,000. I, 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 you know, I don't know what's going on. It don't make no sense to me. Uh, I guess, I, you know, this is why I was never in command. I was just a, a field trooper. So the M60 reached operational capability upon field in the U.S. European exercises. Of course, I mean, these tanks would have limited survivability against this new uh, uh, T90 tank. Uh, but still, you know, it, it's better than the old T9, T72s the Ukrainians were using. So the M60 beginning November 1960, the first combat use of the M60 was by Israel. And listen to this. During the 1973 Yom Kippur War, where it saw service under the Maglok 6 designation performing well in combat against comparable tanks, such as the T-62, in 1982 the Israelis used the M-60 during the 1982 Lebanon War, equipped with upgrades such as explosive reactive armor, imagine that, you can equip them with that, to defend against guided missiles that proved very effective at destroying tanks. The M-60 also saw use in 1983 under Operation Urgent Fury, supporting the U.S. Marines in an amphibious assault in Grenada. Boy, I, we saw some heavy combat there. Uh, and the United States' largest development of M60s was in 1991 Gulf War, where the U.S. Marines, equipped with M60A1s, effectively defeated the Iraqi armored forces, included T T72 tanks. So where is the M60 on the battlefield in in Ukraine? I, I'm just I'm just asking. Not that I want, you know, we want the, the war to get lengthened. Uh, you know, I, and everybody says, well, I'm a Putin warmonger and uh i can i can just see the russians point of view in this war that's all um and then of course right here it says the m60 underwent many upgrades over its service life the interior layout based on design of the m48 uh, provided ample room for updates and improvements extending the vehicle server life for four decades it was widely used by the u.s and cold war allies including nato Despite having superseded by the M1 Abrams in the U.S. military, the tank's hull was the basis for a wide variety of prototype uh, bridge layers. And as of 2015, Egypt is the largest operator of 1,716 upgraded M60A3s. Turkey is second with 866. So you can see we have an ample supply of these M60 tanks that we could provide to Ukraine. But have you heard a freaking word about that? And it's only because of my experience in the military. So now let's get to my stories with the tanks. <laughs> oh my God. All right. I got to take the, the glasses off because these are for close reading. So everything, everything gets blurred up to this point. So anyway, we're out in the Mojave Desert and we're performing uh, live exercises. And uh, so, uh, you, you know, it, and it, it, you just can't imagine... And I just can't imagine what it's like over in Ukraine right now. Um, but, you know, we, we got lost. We were, we were combat engineers. So you're kind of an independent track as a combat engineer because you got explosives on your vehicle. And they kind of keep your track separate because if your track blows up, 
you're going to take out everything around you within like a mile radius. I mean, because, you know, when you've got thousands and thousands of pounds of explosives on your track, uh, you could take out quite a quite a number of other uh, Marines. Uh, so the, the, if, if you've got a knowledgeable tank commander, and I could get into other stories about that, but I've told these in previous videos. If you go way back on my videos talking about being a combat engineer in the Marine Corps. So anyway, so you're kind of separate. So I... I forget what happened, but uh, somehow we got separated from the main for formation, and we were looking to hook back up. And uh, these were back during the Soviet days, and we were conducting these huge military live fire exercises in the Mojave Desert. And uh, so anyway, uh, and, and the guys, you know, I'm only five foot four inches tall. I'll just tell you that right now. A lot of women don't like short guys like me. But anyway, so I. Uh, and I, they'd made me wear the radio. I don't know why. They, they, they just like me looking like a turtle. <laughs> I look like a teenage mutant ninja turtle, I guess. Uh, so I would have to climb up on the side of the track. And, uh, and, the, and the, the squad leader, you know, because we stopped at this one point. And we stopped. And he says, uh, you know, Sergeant, 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 get up on the side of the vehicle and figure out where we are. I said, well, how the hell am I going to know where the hell we are? He says, well, get up and take a look around. Maybe you can recognize the terrain like I'm going to recognize the terrain. Hey, no way in hell. We're in the middle of the damn desert, right? So I climb up on the, the side of the track and, uh, and I'm looking over and we are sandwiched between two M60 tanks. And I'm like, what the? Why would the track driver pull us up between the middle of two M60 tanks? <laughs> I was like, well, I, you know, I don't know. I guess, I guess he figured maybe he was going to ask the tank commanders where the hell we were and where the hell the main formation was. Yeah, this is how this is the chaos of battle. Because you, you know, if you ever watch movies, you know, it's it's not all about, you know, even even in live fire exercises or things that are supposed to be controlled conditions. By the way, a lot of people do die in these live fire exercises. You don't know that. Uh, you would not, then your media would never put that out. But anyway, so, um, so the guy, you know, so I, I climbed up on the side and I was hollering down to my squad leader and I said, uh, yeah, we're, um, we're in between, we're in a tank formation, man. And I guess the tanks thought it would be funny or maybe they just didn't care or they just didn't notice that we were right in between them. So the tank on the right fired down range. Now, I had no idea of the concussion that comes off of the side of one of those uh, tanks firing down range. Now, you got to remember a track vehicle weighs, I don't know, a couple thousand pounds, maybe three, four, five thousand pounds. I don't know how much a track weighs. I guess I should have looked that up before I made this video. So, but the concussion, because I had my torso hanging up off of the side of the, uh, the track. Now, the track is like, you know, what, six feet? And we've got 13 guys in the track. And so it, it, it literally lifted me off the side of the track and <laughs> blew me across the vehicle. And I slammed into the wall and fell down on top of the guys on the other side. And of course, the track rocked, literally rocked, probably, you know, a couple, three feet, three, four feet up in the air from the concussion of the tank firing down range. Well, then the tank on the left fired down range and of course now I'm laying on top of the guys on the left and I got the radio on and of course now I'm rolling across the track to the right hand side and so then the tank on the right fire so the track so the tanks on the left and the right are firing down range and we're right in between them and of course everybody in the track is screaming get us the hell out of here you know <laughs> what the hell and, and of course I the track drivers going crazy but you have to understand that the the commander of the track is not the track driver it's the the, the guy the the well my my platoon sergeant or whatever my squad leader i can't remember who was in there I, well it was the squad leader that he's in charge of the track but he couldn't get to the front of the track because the track kept rocking back and forth from the tanks firing down range and of course the concussion is blowing our eardrums out I, and so finally he got up, he said, get us the hell out of here. So finally we backed the hell out of there. So that is my tank story. And of course, my second tank story uh, that I wanted to tell you, and this is just a funny story, because, I, but I wanted to, to tell you the, the, the tremendous firepower of just an M60 tank. I can't even imagine the firepower of these new Russian tanks. Oh my God. I mean, this, this, well, here, let's, uh, here's, 
Dang it. Let me get my glasses on. This is the, so, okay, you, you got the firepower of the M60, and I just described what it was like. So this is a 125 millimeter smooth bore. So what was the M60? Dang on it. I don't see, uh, well, I, I gave it to you in the notes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, uh, okay. Oh, here we go. Uh, anyway, all right, I, I can't. Well, okay, so here, the M60 is 50.7 short tons of weight. Of course, the M M60A3 is 54.6. But what I want to get you is the bore of the gun, and I don't see it in these notes. You'd think that that would be the most prominent thing that they would want you to know. I'm sure I said it somewhere in the notes. Anyway, I don't want to waste too much time on the video on that. But anyway, let's just say it's significantly bigger. Um, so I can't imagine the, the firepower of that tank. All right, so the second story was, uh, you know, I mean, I know it's hard to believe, but sometimes in the desert, I mean, that heat just saps the energy right out of you. You know, maybe I was dehydrated or whatever, but it just seemed like I had like mononucleosis or something because I could sleep everywhere. I, and during the day, you know, if we had some idle time, I would just lay down on the ground and go to sleep. And I think the guys thought it was pretty funny. So there was one, this one particular day and I'm kind of laying in just kind of like a hole and just waiting for us to move out again. And I fell asleep and uh, they thought it would be funny as hell to roll an M60 tank over top of me <laughs> to see if I would wake up. I tell you, there are some sick freaking people in the damn military. There's nothing like waking up. And by the way, if, if, here's the picture of the M60. I'm going to put the dog down. Hold on. I got to show you this. So this is the picture of the M60 tank. Hopefully you're getting a good view of it. So I was all the way back in here underneath the tank when they rolled it over top of me before I woke up. I was literally, the tank had made pretty good progress over top of me and I uh, of course, I freaked out, but I mean, I, no, to be honest, you might think that's extreme. It was extremely dangerous. I'm not going to lie. They could have they crushed me like a bug. But they were creeping the tank over very, very slowly, okay? And, but I did freak out, and I actually rolled over and hit, hit the tracks on the inside of the tank because, I, I, you know, when you wake up, I mean, you're all disoriented, and I hit the tracks on this side. And then I, 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 and then of course I ran out and of course, you know, I'm cussing up a storm. What the hell is wrong with you guys, you sons of guns and you know, all of that shit. Uh, but that's what we do in the military. We just, you got to have some fun somewhere in there. All right. So that's it for my tank uh, video. You guys uh, have fun. It's good, good, good to live in the free, free, free state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSanctimonious.